60 years ago tomorrow, President John F. Kennedy was shot and killed while riding in his motorcade through Dallas. Virtually every American who was at least six or seven years old at the time vividly remembers what they were doing when they heard the news. Bob Schieffer at the time was a reporter in Fort Worth, not far from Dallas. He later went to work for CBS News and spent more than four decades there as a reporter and eventually as anchor of the CBS Evening News. In 2009, Bob Schieffer came to Maine for a talk at the Knox Museum in Thomaston and told us the astounding story of what happened to him on November 22nd, 1963. Well, I was uh, the police reporter at the uh, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Uh, I worked the night shift. I didn't get off till 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, so I was asleep the night that Jack Kennedy on that fateful trip came to Texas. And he spent the night in Fort Worth and then got up the next morning and w went, went over to Dallas. And my wife uh, saw him uh, make the last speech of his life at the Hotel Texas in Fort Worth at a breakfast the Chamber of Commerce put on. Uh, my brother, who was in high school, had gotten up and had gone down and stood outside and saw, saw the president come out. And uh, so my brother came back from that uh, and woke me up and he said, you better get up and go to work. He said, the president's been shot over in Dallas. And, you know, I, you know, woke up, I was shocked. We'd never had anything like that happen. Uh, I didn't know what this was all about. But anyway, I got dressed as fast as I could. I went down to the, to the uh, city desk and was just trying to help out answering the phones there on the city desk. Uh, when a woman called and I answered the phone and said, is there anybody there can give me a ride to Dallas? And I said, well, lady, you know, we're not running a, a taxi service here besides the president's been shot. And she said, yes, I heard it on the radio. I think my son is the one they've arrested. And it was Lee Harvey Oswald's mother of all people. And so another reporter and I, I had a Triumph sports car in those days. I knew I couldn't take her to Dallas in that. Uh, so another reporter and I, using his car, and we took her uh, to Dallas. He drove and uh, I, uh, I rode along in the back seat and interviewed her. And, uh, but the amazing part of the story was that uh, after we got to Dallas, I never told the Dallas police who I was. I just said, I'm, I'm the one who brought Oswald's mother over here. Is there any place we can put her where these reporters can't be bothering her? And as was your custom, you were sort of dressed like a yeah, cop. Yeah, I had on my snap brim hat and looked like a cop. So they gave us a little office back in the burglary squad, and uh, we stayed out there, and I would go out in the hallway where we had a lot of reporters on this thing by then, gather up the information, and then go back and phone it in from this phone that we had uh, in this uh, private room where she was. And having a phone in those days was a big deal. If you didn't have a place you could phone it in, you didn't have a story. And a lot of those reporters were having to go blocks to find a phone. So. Toward nightfall, uh, she uh, said to me, he said, do you think they'd let me see my son? And I said, well, I don't know, I'll go ask. So I went and asked the uh, chief of homicide, and he said, yeah, we ought to do that. We probably ought to do that. And he said, so he led us into a holding room off the jail. His, his mother, by this time, his wife had uh, shown up on the scene, so they put her in there with her mother. And uh, I'm sitting there thinking, my heavens, I'm gonna you know, get to see the, this guy. They're gonna bring him down from the jail. Uh, I'll get to interview him maybe, uh, if not, I'll at least hear what he says to his mother. What a story. And uh, finally a guy standing in the corner said, who are you? And I said, well, who are you? And he said, son, uh, don't get cute here. He said, uh, get out of here because he said, if I ever see you again, I'm going to kill you. And <laughs> he probably meant it. And, and it turned out he was the first guy in over six hour, hours in the police station who had asked me who I was, and it turned out he was an FBI agent. He was just doing what he should have done. But, I mean, that's the end of the story. I always call it the biggest story I almost got and didn't. But, uh, my God, what an adventure uh, in the middle of that tragedy. The adjectives <laughs> don't do that story justice. Mind-boggling fantastical, whatever you want to put on it, doesn't do it justice. Like, perfect timing? What? It's just extraordinary. Wild, wild stuff. When we come